It's always easier to just think about doing what you're doing now faster, better, more, more automated, more productively. And that's not bad. It's absolutely part of what organizations are doing and should be doing. The really hard work is understanding what new possibilities have opened up and what important constraints are gone because of this, this cornucopia of technology that we're sitting on. I think a lot of the business innovation going forward is going to be people saying, wait a minute, we can approach this situation, this problem, this market opportunity very differently than we have in the past. One of the single biggest changes that I see coming is when you have this unbelievable amount of horsepower and a mass of data to apply it to, that lets you be what I would call a lot more scientific about things. You can be a lot more rigorous in your analysis. You can generate and test hypotheses. You can run experiments. You can adopt a much more scientific mindset. I think if you don't try to migrate your company and your decision making in that direction, you're missing out on a huge opportunity and you had better hope your competition is also not moving in that direction. Because when you compare scientific to pre-scientific approaches, uh, there's one clear winner over and over. And it's not that human intuition is bad. And again, it's not that it's marginalized or made irrelevant in a scientific world. It's that it can be tested and advanced in a scientific world. And if all you're doing is relying on your intuition, uh, you are really, um, leaving a huge opportunity on the table. Scott um, Fitzgerald has a fantastic quote. He talks about one of the characteristics of a first-rate mind is the ability to hold two opposite viewpoints at the same time and not get all messed up. Uh, I think that's really becoming even more important in organizations today. And the two opposing viewpoints are, first of all, that in a lot of ways, companies are becoming or have the opportunity to become even more tightly orchestrated, regimented, regulated via technology. We have all this amazing business process technology that specifies with incredible detail what happens what, when, what the workflow is, who does what, what the roles and responsibilities are, what the decision rights are, and can make it very hard for you to deviate from that. And again, we think about that as some kind of soulless destroying of the human spirit. It's actually incredibly valuable to do inside organizations, and people don't mind being put in the middle of a rational workflow. If I were in charge of an organization, I would want all of my vendors to get paid via a really well-designed, standardized, completely repeatable process that makes sure that they are going to get paid, that there's no fraud, and the potential for abuse is as low as possible. So I actually like this technology-facilitated regimentation orchestration of organizations. At the same time, we can use technology to do exactly the opposite thing, which is essentially to get out of the way as the organization leader or designer and watch what happens as a result. Let people self-select into their roles, into what they're going to do, into who they're going to work with, into what they want to share with the organization, and stop presupposing that we know what the right answer is and who should and shouldn't be involved. So again, this is getting back to what, what we see on the web with Web 2.0 and what I try to talk about inside the enterprise with Enterprise 2.0 is this deep shift toward getting out of the way, letting people self-select and self-organize with some of these cool new technologies, and then harvesting the good stuff that emerges. And what we see over and over again is that some surprisingly good stuff emerges and the bad stuff that happens is not worth worrying about. I use verbs to describe the difference between these two approaches. One, one of the verbs is impose. In other words, the people at the center and the top of the organization get to impose throughout the rest of the organization their ideas for how work should be done. This is what the business process is. This is what the org structure is. This is what the roles and responsibilities are. You can use technology to do that imposing with great precision and great confidence that it's going to be followed, the process is going to be followed the way you design. Because it's very hard to circumvent in a lot of ways. So one of the verbs is impose. The other one that I use is emerge, which is basically get out of the imposition business altogether 
and start watching what emerges, what people actually want to do and how they want to use technology to work with each other. This is exactly the shift that happened during the history of Wikipedia. They started out trying to impose a workflow for developing encyclopedia articles. People stayed away in droves. And it was only when the leaders of that organization were able to get themselves out of the middle of the process, deploy some weird new technology and watch what happened, and that what emerged was what has become Wikipedia. The first area that I ask organizational leaders to think through is what are the most important decisions that get made either on a routine basis or on a more periodic basis, either a strategic level or a tactical level in your company. Just what's important for you all to get right. Following on that, how are you making those decisions right now? And in particular, would you call it much more of an intuitive, judgment-based, experience-based approach? Are you trusting the people? to make the right decision and not giving them a lot of what I would call a digital support for that? Or are you over more toward a scientific approach where there is a lot of digital support, where you're doing a lot of analysis, hypothesis testing, experimentation, throwing this arsenal of digital science, digital business science at the decision? And if a lot of your decisions are over on the intuitive experience-based side, I would really encourage you to start thinking about how to shift them over, what kinds of digital support might be available to help you make these decisions in a more scientific way. If a good idea comes up in the organization, let's say it's a better way to either interface with a customer, a better way to configure a business process, a better uh, design for some important workflow in the organization, how quickly and easily can you propagate that and how widely? In other words, does your technology environment support the propagation of good ideas very widely or does it get in your way? And our colleagues at the Center for Information Systems Research have done a ton of work on the actual digital infrastructure of big organizations and the rule is fragmentation and the exception is consistency. Fragmented just means are we sitting on eight different versions of the same ERP system, for example. Now, that's the norm in most big organizations because historically we have left those kinds of decisions down in the hands of the regional managers. One of the huge reasons that fragmentation hurts you is that it impedes your ability to propagate good ideas throughout the organization and to make changes quickly and to make them stick. So the second set of questions I ask have to do with this impose idea. When you come up with a good way of doing business, how quickly and widely and easily can you impose it? And does technology help you or hurt you with that?